Hello, and welcome to Worship On Demand at First St. Charles. My name is Katie Rome. It's my joy to serve with you as the Director of Connectional Ministries here. And whether it's your first time worshiping online with us or you're here every week, we're glad that you're here and we hope that you feel safe, welcome, and wanted during this time. If it is your first time worshiping with us, would you please fill out the Connect card and let us know that you're here. We would love to send you a welcome gift and know how we can be church with you. And if it's not your first time here, would you still please fill out the Connect card so that we can celebrate your presence with us in worship today? I want to let you know that in a couple weeks, January 19th, we have a Cocoa and Canvas night here at the church. That'll be in the evening in the multi-purpose room. And it's a time for you to come, bring some snacks, Enjoy a warm beverage and follow along with a painting tutorial. We're going to be painting a lovely snowy winter scene with a cardinal, or you can paint however your heart desires. Also at that event, we'll be collecting diapers, wipes, and other baby supplies for a turning point. So if you'd like to come and make a donation, we would love to have you and have, come enjoy that time of fun and fellowship. In just a moment, the Reverend Dr. Bart Hildreth will be continuing our sermon series called Flipped or Fixed. But first, let's continue to worship with our call to worship. We stand at the threshold of a doorway day, looking back at the year past with all the ways that it has shaped us. We come seeking to strengthen our best memories, to repent of our mistakes and find grace for the year ahead. We come with hopeful hearts seeking meaning and purpose. We come seeking to make a difference. We come open to God's will and way. Kate Hanch, and I'm blessed to serve as one of the associate pastors here at First St. Charles. Will you pray with me? God of wisdom and truth, at the beginning of this new year, we look back and we look forward. In the year that has passed, we experienced joy and sorrow. We felt blessed and challenged. Some things went by much too fast and some things lingered on far too long. 
yet you remind us that you are always with us and your love is always near. So at the beginning of this new year, we pause now in silence to reflect on the year that has passed. We remember the things from this past year that we are most thankful for. We recognize the time we gave and received the most love. We are grateful, God, that you were present in those times. We also remember the things we struggled with this past year. We recall the moments where we were sad, angry, scared, and afraid. We consider the times we felt life draining from us. In silence, we recognize the times we gave and received the least love. We are grateful, God, that you were present in those moments too. Gracious God, at the beginning of this new year, we look also we look forward to the year to come. We are confident that you will be with us still when we are thankful and when we are not, when we are happy and when we are sad, when we are out, feel alive and when we feel drained, when we give and receive love and when we do not. God, the world we live in is a messy and challenging. It is the world of King Herod, of pain, of doubt, of fear, of jealousy, of violence, of domination, of injustice, and of human failings. Yet, God, you are always with us. So give us grace and give us courage to live faithfully in this imperfect world. Remind us always of the promise of your kingdom emerging around us and through us and in us. In Jesus' name we pray. Saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen.
Hi, my name is Keith Janice, and I have the joy of serving as the pastor for senior adults. And I have some exciting news to share with you. We broke a record for our Christmas offering this year. Because of your tremendous generosity, we were able to collect over $23,000. And that money will go a long way in supporting our efforts within our community, with our little food pantry with our community care program in Lincoln Elementary. Thank you, thank you, thank you for putting St. Charles first. Of course, you know, there are many other wonderful ministries of our church that need your support. And as you know, there are many ways to give your support. You can give it through the uh, internet on your website. You can use your phone, the app on your phone. You can mail in an offering. You can text in an offering. And better yet, join us for worship at 9 and 11. No matter how you give or how much you give, we appreciate all that you do. Now let's go for, before the Lord. In an attitude of prayer, as we give thanks for the offerings we received, as well as the ones that are on their way. Let us pray. Sustaining God in the power of your Holy Spirit, we dare to live lives that serve your world. Strengthen the gifts of love, compassion, and willingness in each of us. Help us to know that you will abundantly provide all that is necessary to serve those you send us. Strengthen our resolve to be disciples of Jesus, who commit to loving others as he has loved us, passionately and wholly. And it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Today's scripture comes from the book of Psalm, chapter 34. Of David, when he feigned madness before Abimelech, so that he drove him out and went away. I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. My soul makes its boast in the Lord. Let the humble hear and be glad. Oh, magnify the Lord with me, and let us exalt his name together. I sought the Lord, and he answered me and delivered me from all my fears. Look to him and be radiant, so your faces shall never be ashamed. This poor soul cried and was heard by the Lord and was saved from every trouble. The angel of the Lord encamps around those who fear him and delivers them. O oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Happy are those who take refuge in him. The Lord is near to the brokenhearted and saves the crushed in spirit. This is the word that renews our spirit. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. It wasn't exactly how I imagined my day starting. It was 5.30 a.m. I had showered, shaved, dressed, eaten. And before starting in on work, I thought... I'll throw a load of laundry in the washer. At the time, we were having a minor electrical issue in our house, and I had no lights available to me except the light on my phone. No big deal. But then, in the darkness, as I approached the washer, clad in my stocking feet, I noticed something was amiss. Do you know that moment when you realize that something is not right, but it hasn't yet dawned on you what? It's disorienting, alarming to be sure, but you're stunned and trying to figure out what planet you're on. 
That's when it hit me. I was feeling a wetness in my socks. Turning my cell phone around and aiming it to the ground, I saw it. Laundry detergent. A whole brand new gallon of purple, lavender scented laundry detergent had fallen off the shelf and burst open onto the floor, now soaking through my socks. Any suggestions for how one cleans lavender liquid laundry detergent off a concrete floor? We're talking a whole gallon of the stuff. You can't exactly use water. What a mess. An ironically clean mess, but a mess nonetheless. And it had spilled out before me to my great horror and distress. What we in the church know, or what we're supposed to know at least, is that this very thing has happened to all of us. We've all made a mess of things. We've all had reasons to be embarrassed or afraid or angered at how something good that was before us has gotten ruined and how we had a lot to do with the ruining about how something essential to who we are has just gotten spilled away and what has been spilled may have been intended for good instead it turned into a mess and we'd unspill it if we could but there it is it just keeps spreading out in front of us to our horror and distress and often to our hurt and to the hurt of other people Nadia Boltz Weber is a tattooed, covered, former comedian turned profanity-laced Lutheran pastor. She has a prayer that goes like this. Dear God, my heart is a mess. There's just more suffering and loss and fear in the world than it can hold right now. Help me not to let in so much news that I have to put up a clothes sign in the door of my heart because my family and friends need it to stay open. Sometimes my heart doesn't really trust love. When my heart is full, help the anxious thoughts and feelings that poke a hole and empty it again come more slowly or preferably not at all. Sometimes this old girl does unhelpful things to protect herself. When my heart is broken, help it also not create an emotional autoimmune disorder, attacking as a pathogen what is actually harmless. But sometimes, sometimes I'm surprised by my heart. It can be more deeply in love than I ever knew possible. It can increasingly be gladdened by simple things I used to ignore. It can hurt for people I don't even like very much. It can heal from things I used to think would destroy it. It can long for you, God, but in ways that look less like piety and more like friendship. It's confusing having a human heart. So help me remember that while my heart may break, expand, hurt, heal, close, open, and overflow, none of that affects my soul. None of it can get to that part of me which bears your image, the part of me that contains the divine, indistingu inextinguishable spark. And for that, I am thankful. Because, as I stated earlier, my heart is a mess. Do you know what it is to have your hearts or your lives break open because of a mess? And maybe because it's a mess of your own making. Often, when I'm reading the Psalms, I almost skip over the, the heading that some scribe added much later inserted as their own editorial commentary on the song or hymn of the psalm. Maybe today it's not a good idea. Here again is the editorial introduction to the psalm. Of David, when he feigned madness before Abimelech, 
so that he drove him out and he went away. It's evidently a reference to a story in the book of Samuel, chapter 21, involving an incident between David and a certain Philistine king of Gath. If ever there was a messed up life, it was David's. He's on the run from Saul, branded as a traitor by his own tribe, his own people. His life is in danger, and he has fled the country. He ends up going from the frying pan to the fire when he's surrounded by the Philistine king and his men. Did we mention that Gath was the hometown of a certain local hero named Goliath? That's the city, and that's its king. As Oliver Hardy would say many times to Stan Laurel, this is a fine mess you've gotten us into. What does David do? Get this. He saves himself by playing the madman. The text uses the unusual idiom for feigning madness to say that David altered his good sense. I'm pretty sure that I saw this on an episode of Law and Order with the same exact plot line. How many times do we alter our good sense trying to make sense of the mess we're in? David has to act crazy to get out of the mess that he was in while trying to get out of the mess that he was in with Saul. That's the setting, the context, the framework that the editor of our psalm wants us to bear in mind. And it makes so much more jarring when we hear David exclaim, I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. My soul makes its boast in the Lord. Let the humble hear and be glad. Perhaps in an important sense, it's an essential tenet of our faith that we always see our lives as a sparing. A friend of mine shares, when I was a pastor out in the country, I occasionally heard some old saint pray these words, Lord, we thank you for sparing us another day. I was troubled, my friend says, by that prayer. It seemed to presuppose a God always poised to strike, grudging us another day before snuffing us out. To this menacing figure, this generous God of Jesus bears no resemblance. And yet, in the deepest sense, aren't we all asked to see our days as a sparing? There is repentance for us to do, is there not? A turning and a seizing of our promise. The good and urgent news is that we've been granted a time. No one knows how brief to live lives that bless God for sparing us another day. David, who has made such a mess of his life, makes his boast in the Lord. That's the first movement of his song. The second comes when he invites us in. Oh, magnify the Lord with me, he says, and let us exalt his name together. If I can speak candidly, I know that there are a number of us worshiping together in this moment who've been hurt by the church. Let me start by saying, I'm sorry. I'm genuinely sorry for the pain and trauma and hurt I would also add, me too. 
There are times that I know that I've hurt others, and in turn, times that I've been hurt. Being in a relationship is tough. It's messy. It's far from perfect. And I know that there are days that we show up for worship because we know we need to know we're not alone. And other days that we show up because others need to feel like they're not alone. Can we be in it together? I want to be in a church where messed up people like me join together with other messed up people to make as much praise as we could muster. Can we do that? And the payoff, verse 18, the Lord is close to the brokenhearted and saves those who are crushed in spirit. God is close to the brokenhearted and saves those who are crushed in spirit. How wonderfully crazy good news is that? God is every bit as close as this very moment. Today's message was a reminder that sometimes our lives can be real fixer-uppers. But we're in it together, and our lives are only what we make of them together. So part of our invitation to discipleship this week is for those who might be looking for a church. If you're interested, reach out to one of our pastors, reach out to me. We would love to have you, and we're better together. The rest of our invitation is for those of us who feel like our lives are a little bit of a mess right now. Join in praise to bless the Lord at all times. For what reasons can we bless the Lord this day? And now will you receive benediction? My sisters, brothers, and friends in Christ, May God take your every mess and spare you for another day to bless. To bless the Lord and exalt God's name together. And may God, the Lord, be close to the brokenhearted and save those who are crushed in spirit. And all God's people said, Amen.